Welcome back to Simplifying Synthesis. In this video, we are going to look at the total synthesis of a Barrow This work was published by Willy Amberg and Eric Carrera in JAX in August 2022. A Barrow was first isolated in 2009 by Rodriguez et al. from the Gorgonian coral Pseudoterogorgia lesbithae. Extracts from this coral have shown anti-inflammatory effects and have even made their way into commercial skincare products. A lot of research has been conducted into synthesizing compounds from this family, but a complete total synthesis has not yet been reported. Difficulties synthesizing this compound arise from the 5556 fused ring system, containing seven stereocenters, making this quite a compact yet densely complex molecule. This framework contains four ketones, two of which are contiguous, which adds further rigidity to the complex structure. The researchers developed an interesting strategy to construct this ring framework. They hypothesized that they could utilize a cyclization cascade to construct multiple bonds in a single reaction. This cascade would include a meyer schuster rearrangement, a Nazarov cyclization, a cyclopropanation, and also an aldol addition. This pentacyclic intermediate could ultimately be derived from a monocyclic precursor containing two alkenes and an alkyne. This precursor was constructed using two different fragments, so let's look at the synthesis of fragment 1. This started with an alkyne addition to an aldehyde derived from pantalactone. N-methyl ephedrine was used as a chiral catalyst, and this coordinates to zinc 2, which was present as zinc triflate. This is proposed to form an organometallic species with the alkyne upon deprotonation with triethylamine, and this complex can coordinate to the aldehyde and deliver the nucleophile selectively to one phase due to the chirality of the methyl ephedrine ligand. This formed the product in a 9 to 1 DR, which was taken forward without purification. In the next step, the TMS group was removed using TBAF, and the alcohol was then acetylated using a mixture of acetic anhydride and DMAP. The DMAP acts as a nucleophilic catalyst attacking the acetic anhydride and forming a more electrophilic acyl group, which then added to the alcohol in a 95% yield, completing the synthesis of fragment 1. To synthesize fragment 2, the researchers used a bisylal enol ether of a cyclopentanol. This was reacted with methyl lithium which adds to the silicon to generate an anion and promote the aldol addition to the aldehyde acceptor. The researchers used this aldol reaction as simple alkylation of the enolate was unsuccessful. Using the aldehyde acceptor necessitated the use of a deoxygenation step which was carried out using a barton mccombie reaction. This reaction uses a xanthate intermediate which was synthesized by first deprotonating the alcohol with sodium HMDS which then added to carbon disulfide. This was methylated using methyl iodide to form the desired xanthate in an 80% yield. To carry out the deoxygenation, AIBN is first heated to generate a radical upon the loss of nitrogen gas. This radical abstracts a hydrogen from tetrabutyl tin hydride to generate a tin radical. This tin radical first adds to the sulfur to generate a carbon centered radical that is stabilized by the three adjacent heteroatoms. Homolytic cleavage of the carbon oxygen bond eliminates the tin xanthate and produces a carbon centered radical which then reacts with another molecule of tributyl tin hydride to complete the reaction and regenerate the tin radical. Taking this compound forward, it was reacted with potassium HMDS at minus 78 degrees. This combination of a strong base and low temperatures favoured deprotonation at the less sterically hindered side of the ketone and the formation of the kinetic enolate. Commons reagent was then added to install a triflate group and the TBDPS was removed using TBAF, generating the product in a 71% yield. This triflate was required for the Sonogashira coupling. Palladium first undergoes oxidative addition into the carbon-oxygen bond, forming an organopalladium species. In tandem with this palladium cycle, there is also a copper cycle, where copper iodide reacts with fragment 1, first coordinating to the alkyne, allowing it to be deprotonated by triethylamine forming an alkynal copper species. A transmetallation then occurs and produces a compound where both fragments are coordinated to palladium. Reductive elimination produced the target compound in a 94% yield and regenerated the palladium zero. In the next step, the researchers carried out a paric-doring oxidation. DMSO 
first adds to a sulfur trioxide pyridine complex, forming an activated sulfonium species that is then attacked by the hydroxyl group. This intermediate is then deprotonated by dipia and the resulting negative charge can abstract a proton and oxidize the hydroxyl group to an aldehyde in a mechanism that is very similar to the Swern oxidation. With this aldehyde now in place, they could carry out the critical cyclization cascade. This cascade is promoted by Escher-Varen's catalyst, which is the gold complex of the John Foss ligand, together with an acetonitrile ligand and a hexafluoroantimonate counterion. In the first step of the cascade, this promotes a meyer schuster arrangement by first coordinating to the alkyne, allowing the carbonyl oxygen of the acetate group to attack the carbon and promote the cleavage of the carbon-oxygen bond. Overall, completing a 1-3 migration to generate a product with an aline that is in equilibrium with an alkyne. It is this aline that is proposed to attack the gold to generate a cation and allow for a Nazarov cyclization to occur, forming a new carbon-carbon bond together with the migration of one of the carbon-carbon double bonds. The gold carbene that is produced by this reaction is then attacked by the pi bond of the terminal alkene. This is a concerted addition that forms a cyclopropane and eliminates the gold catalyst. These first three steps of the cascade are carried out over 12 hours, and after this time, tributyl tin methoxide is added. This hydrolyzes the ester, forming a tin alkoxy species that then reacts as an enolate to perform an aldol addition and add to the aldehyde. This cascade was remarkably efficient as it generated four rings and six stereocenters in one single step and produced the target compound in a 71% yield. With the framework now complete, the researchers entered the end game of the synthesis and set about installing the correct functionality on this carbon framework. The PMB group was first removed using DDQ and then the carbon oil was reduced using lithium aluminium hydride, producing a single isomer in an 80% yield, likely guided by the inaccessibility of one side of the molecule due to its concave shape. Though the final product has this carbon oil present, this reduction was required to provide selectivity in the next step which was a reductive ring opening of the cyclopropane. This was carried out using hydrogen gas and a platinum dioxide catalyst. When this reaction was carried out on the compound with the carbonyl present, the hydrogen added across the undesired bond and formed a six-membered ring. However, when they reduced this carbonyl to an alcohol and carried out the same reductive ring opening, they achieved the desired selectivity, forming the methyl group on the quaternary carbon centre. They were able to obtain crystals of this product which proved its stereochemistry. With this transformation complete, they could then re-oxidize the alcohol back to the carbonyl level, together with the other two hydroxyl groups present in the molecule. This was carried out using a paric doring oxidation, which we saw earlier, and this product was then subject to a Riley oxidation. In this reaction, selenium dioxide reacts with the enol tautomer of the ketone. This produces a seleninic acid, which undergoes a proton transfer and the elimination of water to generate an oxocellanilidine, which is then attacked by water. A proton transfer then occurs and selenic acid is eliminated to produce the alpha ketone and complete the total synthesis of a berylone with the structure unambiguously confirmed using X-ray crystallography. Well that's it for this week. Join me in the next video where we look at the total synthesis of pleurotin.